Hi, I'm Anika Allen. I'm the Head of Diversity, Equity and Inclusion for a global production powerhouse called All Free Media. They make shows like Gogglebox, Call the Midwife, lots of shows you would have heard and we own over 45 different production companies. And I'm also the co-founder of the Black Magic Awards, which is an award ceremony where we celebrate the change makers and the trailblazers in the British Black community. <laughs> working in diversity, equity and inclusion for the last mm, 10 years and but also my background is in communications and journalism. Okay, awesome, thank you Anika. Uh, so I guess we were first introduced to each other about a decade ago through a mutual friend Joyce, right? Yes. Yeah, because um, <laughs> I think I made uh, like a, a, a pink dress for you. What, what, what it was mobile again? awards. Okay, mobile right, awards, yeah. cool, cool, cool. I remember the picture. Yeah. <laughs> And, and I think what's what kind of struck me upon meeting you is um, how dedicated you are to uh, not only your own career progression, but from what I've seen of you on social media, you support others. Like you always comment in and like and share other people's kind of uh, posts. And obviously, you're a very confident woman. So, where does that confidence stem from? If I think back to when I was a, a young child, my mm. mom, um, she's she was. You know, she had her day job. She was also in the Territorial Army. She also <laughs> worked in a nightclub and also worked in a hotel, kind of just to kind of make ends meet for my sister and I and things. But we never felt like we were without or even without her time or attention either okay. and things. And um, and my mum, I always knew I wanted to work in the media industry and nobody in my family worked in anything remotely connected to the industry. But um, my mum never ever put any limiting beliefs on me. She'd always say... You can do anything. I don't know how to do it for you, but go out there and find <laughs> find out how to do it yourself. So I think kind of just her saying, you've got to go and do it yourself, kind yeah. of just, um, one, put the kind of confidence in me to just do it regardless okay. and um, and not put any limits on myself. Right. And um, two, I think, like I used to play netball. Well, actually, I still play netball, but when I was <laughs> a kid, I played netball as well. Yeah. And, uh, and then when I'd come home and I'd say, oh, we lost the match today. Mom would be like, okay. The better team clearly won. You better put in. The, you better work harder <laughs> next time. <laughs> and so I think just kind of little things like that, just kind of always, just and, and just seeing how hard my mum worked, I think mm. made me. Um, I guess gave me kind of like a natural drive to kind of want to work hard. And, and I just think I've just generally come from quite a confident, big, bubbly yeah. Jamaican family who are very kind of like happy, happy and confident who, in who they are. And so mm. I think that kind of just, I guess, um, kind of. Um, is within me okay. <laughs> because of that. So you mentioned uh, you've got Jamaican heritage, right? Yeah. Were, were you born there? No, no, no. Born in, um, but, so I grew up in Birmingham, but okay. my, um, my mum's the last of 10, so she was born here, but my dad was born in Jamaica and came over when he was oh, like... It's a huge family. Major. Yeah. And um, so you went to Jamaica, right? Yes, yes. Okay, cool. You're taking your, your, your daughter to Jamaica? Not yet. She's been to her, her dad's um, Barbados, so she's okay. been in Barbados. She hasn't been to Jamaica yet. Okay, cool, cool. And um, I guess you previously used to work for like a corporate kind of brand as well. And and then before then, what what were you kind of what were you well where were you working? So I started out my career as a journalist. I kind of yeah. freelance doing music, entertainment, yeah. arts, culture. Um, right for lots of different all the black press so okay. pride black hair and beauty black hair really? magazine the voice new nation touch magazine that used to be around then yeah. um then also writing for some of the mainstream press at the time as well mm. from the likes of the guardian to birmingham post because i was from birmingham okay. and other publications that were around basically whoever wanted to pay me to do right. interviews with amazing talent yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and um okay. and so um so did that, loved it. However, when you're waiting for people to pay your invoices as a yeah. journalist and you've got bills to pay, yeah, yeah. and it's like, okay, what else can I do to, to, to be getting yeah. regular money but utilising my interviewing skills, my communication yeah, skills, yeah. my organisational skills? And then, um, and then I, I remember watching TV and thinking, well, people have to make these programmes. All these mm. people on TV have to be interviewed. And yeah. so kind of just then did some research and kind of found a couple of post-production companies. Obviously, right. everybody knows the BBC, so I literally applied for um, a production assistant job at the BBC, got right. that there and worked there. However, I was a production assistant, but knew I wanted to be a researcher. And right. kept saying that to people, because you'd see other people getting to be a researcher, and I'm like, mm, 
I know I can do a lot better job than this. So why are they getting these jobs yeah, and I'm yeah, not getting yeah. these jobs? And literally in the end, I decided to leave because I got offered a researcher job elsewhere. And right. as soon as I decided to leave, that's when they were like, oh, we've got a job. No, I've got another job now. Okay. <laughs> um, so literally worked in TV production for a number of years and lots yeah. of entertainment reality formats for the likes of um, Fremantle, um, Maverick TV, um, lots of different companies. And... Mm. Um, Again, kind of really enjoyed that. Programs like 10 Years Younger to okay. Holiday Showdown, Showdown, which was like why swap, but holiday swap, etc. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. and things. And during that time, I also then launched my own business because as the journalist in me was always calling. Yeah. And um, But there wasn't a publication that I felt focused on um, youth culture and particularly kind of just young black people that were doing amazing things. Right. And so um, so myself and a business partner, we launched a publication which was called Blade Mag at the time, which was... Was that like, you? Yeah, yeah, which oh, was... Wow. Um, which was popular at the time, it was like yeah. Blade Mag Rewind. And so used to do lots of interviews with um, talent within the industry. And yeah. again, to, um, we didn't have like a marketing budget. And when we started, social media wasn't really there mm, like that. Yeah, so. Sure. Um, and so it's like, okay, how do we get this publication out there right. and to market to industry and to people? And, and so then we do events. So we do Flavor, Flavor Live, which was like a live music event. So if you were an artist and you featured on the cover of the magazine, then you needed to come down to Flavor Live and perform. And so then we also ran a model competition called Miss Flavor. And so Miss Flavor was for um, women that wanted to be models. And so they'd get the opportunity to take part in a model contest, they'd get prizes. So we'd partner with brands, so like Luster Hair Products, and they'd get to be the face of Luster, um, Sleep Makeup, who would come down there and do the makeup, and Luster would do the hair on the day. Different fashion brands who would again sponsor the girls for the clothes that they would wear on the day, and then the show would be choreographed, and we'd have um, lots of performances. So, and hosts, celebrity hosts, we had the likes of Kojo. Um, Ace and Viz, um, Sarah Jane Crawford, um, lots of different people that hosted over the time, lots of okay. prestigious, lots of performances. It would always be celebrity judges as well. And it was kind of one of those events that used to be kind of the, one of the hot parties on the industry yeah. calendar, like every year, what, when's Miss Flavor happening this year? Um, and so, yeah, so, so yeah, and conferences and just lots of different things to kind of amplify the brand. Yeah. And then as digital came up, um, as digital so. So as things in the digital arena started to kind of really, um, really increase, um, yeah. we'd do more things in that space. And so I had that business for about eight years and then my business partner and I kind of parted ways. And from there, because lots of brands I've worked with during that time, from the likes of Google to Universal, where, um, people were like, you're really good at engaging youth audiences, you're really good at engaging diverse audiences. Can yeah. you help us with our kind of marketing, our digital strategy, our communications, etc." So I did that with lots of different okay. brands on a kind of freelance basis. Um, so did you ever have a day off? <laughs> and, uh, I felt like, I, you know what? When I was when I was younger, my philosophy used to be like, oh, I sleep when I'm dead. Yeah. But as I've, as I've grown older and kind of realised the importance of sleep yeah. and also the importance of rest and self-care, mm. um, self -care, I make sure now that I, I kind of carve that into my diary okay. because I think we can, you can, particularly watching social media, you can often see all these entrepreneurs, all the people that are kind of like, have a day job and a side hustle. Mm. You see them working, 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 and you think, yeah, that's why it is. I need to hustle 24 seven and, and not rest, but actually rest is important for one, for your health and mm. for you to actually be able to do the best job possible. Mm. And also just self-care is important for just for your general me mental health. And I think I appreciate that more. Yeah. Now, I'm, now I'm kind of, I guess, a bit older and a bit more seasoned with mm. my industry and I'm also more confident in myself and my skills and, and what I do yeah. and things. But I, I guess you need to be present for your family as well. Exactly, exactly, yeah. exactly. And, 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 and Anybody that knows me would say that um, I definitely try to be present for friends and family and intentional yeah. with, with building and man maintaining those relationships and things. Sure. Might not be able to see everybody as much, but you'll, you'll always get a text, you'll always get a phone call, yeah. or even if we can only see each other once or twice a year, there'll be something in the diary so that we <laughs> yeah. connect at some point. Uh, and um, the thing of Aniko that was a child to Aniko that's an adult, um, would you say... Or what aspects of your personality have changed? I'd probably say that I'm less of um, a perfectionist now than I was as a child. And I think growing up, particularly as a black person, and, you know, from going to kind of school and being starting out in the world of work, yeah. um, just you often think you have to work twice as hard, and mm. which we have had to do 
as black people, and I wish I've had to had to do, but I, I think one of the things now I realise I, I appreciate kind of my time and also the skills that I bring to the table. And so I think that perfectionism, mm -hmm. um, I guess you're thinking, oh, I need to just work even harder to show that I'm great at this and things is yeah. is kind of not there. Now actually I realise I'm I'm good regardless. And if the person that I'm working for, the company that I'm working for, or individual that I'm working for doesn't see that, yeah. then that's on them, not on me, because I know that anything I'm, I'm doing is coming from a place of love, from a place of passion, yeah. and I'm good at what I do. And so um so I think kind of that um the older and eager is kind of less eager to please right. others and just more eager to kind of like please I guess myself and, and be my authentic self okay. um, when, when I'm in any environment. I, I mean how have you found like the, the recent um well maybe not recent but this whole thing of diversity mm -hmm. how have you found it's been accepted or not within the, the spheres that you work in? Yeah um so working in diversity, equity and inclusion, yeah. I think it all, all depends on the kind of organisation you're working for. Yeah. Um, for the uh, D, E and I, which I'll abbreviate it to instead of saying it. <laughs> 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 but, um, for D, E and I to be successful, then it needs to be kind of from the top down and the bottom up. So the leadership needs to um, be empower people to want to make change in these areas and also, you know, as a, it's everybody's job you know to make change with systematic change within any organization it's it's about people and people make products people make services and so it's everybody's job to kind of do their kind of their part and to do those little meaningful actions that will create these change and so i think again it, it depends on the culture of the organization as to whether the things you implement will be a success so having worked in the finance industry where i think the company that i worked for was a lot further along then um, so the creative industry where I am now, um, and also finance industry has a lot more budget to play with. Mm. Um, you know, there are, there are employee resource groups, which are, are mini communities where um, people within an organisation can, can connect, can network, can yeah. do events, and you can listen and you can learn. Um, there are, um, you know, committees and councils throughout the organisation that kind of will help to drive change as well. And, yeah. and you're kind of looking at it from the whole... Um, from every aspect and every layer within the organisation. Um, and you'll have teams where smaller organisations and organisations that are newer to this might have one person yeah. or, or very small team driving DNI, which is which is difficult because um, you know it's, it's it, as I said it's everybody's job and also yeah. to try and kind of get around to everybody in that organisation and implement things, it's it's tough. And I think right. it can also um the people doing the work as well, it can also take an impact on their mental health, particularly um, when everything was happening with kind of when the murder of George Floyd and but yeah. that you know obviously on the run up to that you had Armand Aubrey you had so many different people mm, yeah. that were um that were that were killed and then lots of other things happening and then you've got your personal life as well so you're absorbing all this as a as as a professional in this space and things and you know often you'll find people will come to you if they're having kind of negative experiences at work whether it's to do with racism or to do with their mental health or maybe yeah. they have a disability but again you're again absorbing all these people's problems and energy and things and stuff and so um and how workplaces deal with it will be dependent on i guess the culture of that okay. workplace cool. so so i guess um, in terms of your career you've yeah. um you've got the black magic that work black magic boards yeah black magic board sorry um you're on the the, the voting uh board for the brits yeah and, and then uh, you were and the Mobos. one of the okay and the Mobos, and then you did a keynote speech with UK Black Business Show, right? Uh, I'm on the so I'm on the advisory board for UK Black Business Show okay. and UK Black Business Weekend. Didn't and then you've got your kind of corporate work, and then you're a mum. I mean, are there any other things that you're kind of being able to fit on top of that that were not you know the, the world isn't aware of that you're trying to achieve? Um, so I do a lot of uh, kind of like speaking engagements mm -hmm. for. Um, you know, whether it's going into kind of colleges, schools, universities and things, I guess, lecturing. So I kind of do that on top of that, um, on top of the kind of my day job and the other things that I do. Yeah. Um, definitely have ambitions for writing a book one day. So mm -hmm. the notes are all there. Just again, it's kind of factoring in the time to kind of really just sit down and put kind of pen to paper. Mm. Um, and I'm just very passionate about doing things. Um, like I've always, since I was like, kid I've always done like events and things like yeah. I remember at school kind of doing like a leavers um a leavers party for um 
from my peers because the school I went to like a really kind of school that was in a very deprived area that didn't okay. have money for anything and that they were like oh you can't do a leave us some a leave us party for you because we don't have a budget so then I remember saying okay I will I will find the budget and did a wow. talent show with all the kids at school and things and raised like four hundred pounds so we could have a leave us party mm. so I think kind of doing events has always come. Um, quite natural for me and then okay. people will always ask me well, help me organize my birthday party help me organize my baby shower and things yeah. and stuff and so um <laughs> so there's just even lots of just personal things i do for like friends and family yeah. outside of <laughs> the day job that sometimes can take up time so, so what um so you're from Birmingham. so what made you come down from Birmingham to london yeah what was the thought process there so I was born and grew up in Birmingham mm. and knowing that I wanted to work in the media industry mm. and in Birmingham at the time, besides kind of a few newspapers and things, there wasn't really much in terms of the creative space going okay. on there. And so it made sense for me to look to London to, as to where I'm going to study in terms of going to university and then where I'm going to build a life and a career because wow. at the time there wasn't anything going on in Birmingham. Obviously out in the regions now in you know Manchester, Bristol, Birmingham, there, there is a lot more within that creative yeah. space. You have, you know, the BBC hub in Birmingham that's that's gotten a lot bigger since um since I left and things and you know um we had the Commonwealth Games <laughs> in the in summer twenty twenty two um in Birmingham. So there's a lot going on in the city and uh, and every time I go back to kind of see friends and family I'm very proud of of where I've seen the um how I've seen the city transition. But right. just London just became home because it just you know, it's it's hard to get into these industries as it is because generally they are very white, very middle class, very you know built on nepotism in terms of you know like it's who you know mm. and things. So trying to make your way and find those networks and those opportunities is not always the easiest. Hence, why I guess one of the reasons why I do what I do because I want the I don't want people to have to kind of face the challenges that I face trying to come into these industries like not knowing not having anyone to talk to or, or no one to direct me on the path that I could take to get yeah. ahead. And um, and so that's the reason, I guess, why I'm in London and why I stay, just because it just made sense. And I've been here long enough now and built a life here. Yeah. So every, I mean, every, my family and friends have move back, move back, especially now I've got a three-year-old daughter yeah. and they miss her and want to see her. They're like, just come back to Berenga. And it's great because when I'm there, I have so much support in terms of like babysitters and people wanting to see her and yeah. things. And so, so there, sometimes it's that poor, but again, I've got a life here and I, you know, I love what I do, so... Was it was it an easy transition coming down from, from Birmingham? I think probably what made it easier for me when I moved to London was because I moved with my twin sister and two other friends. So we were all going to different universities, but then we visited our halls of residence and we were like, mm, no, this is not for us. <laughs> so then we got a house together um, in London. And so then... So then we were all living together, so that felt familiar. But then we were all making our separate friends and then bringing our friends together because they'd come round to um to our house where we were living and things and having massive house parties or <laughs> or blueses as people would, would would say they were now. Um and so I think kind of just having that um that friendship there, yeah. I think kind of just helped help me relax in London. Yeah. And um and to be fair, my mum worked in London in the week mm. from, when, from when I was the age of 14. So right. we used to come down to London a lot. So I was already already familiar with the city. Okay. So it wasn't something that was scary to me, I think. Yeah. Um, and I guess going back to one of your early early questions in terms of the comf- what makes you confident and things, yeah. I think um, because I was confident, mm. um, that helped me to be like, okay, there's this event don't know if I'm going to meet anybody, but let me go there and let me network. And I'd force myself to go to places and just speak to someone and just be like, okay, let me go and then just go up to someone and be like, hi. Like, actually, I think I was more fearless then than I am now, but maybe it's because I had to be. Okay. And so, like, so I didn't mind going to events and just kind of inserting myself. I'm like, hi, how are you? And things. And, and working in the media industry, I remember when I started, I remember being on a production and then it's finishing and it's like, oh, what am I going to do for work now? Mm. And um, I remember... Um, Another um, young lady that was working on projects. Like, I've got my next job. Look, how did you get a job between now and last night? What did she's like? Oh, I went to the pub with such and such, and they told me about another production. Like, I didn't know that going to the pub was the way to kind of to network and to build these relationships, and that I'd hear about opportunities. So I was like, so it was like, oh, a light bulb went off. Okay, so I mean, I'm not a drinker, but okay, I'll go to the pub and and. <laughs> hold a yeah, cranberry juice yeah, just to be able to go and talk to the kind of like the head of talent or the head of production just to see if whatever opportunities that I could work on and so so it's kind of little things like that that I didn't know that I had to just learn myself along the way and um and I think you know 
being in London, you know, there wouldn't have been opportunities like that in Birmingham for me to yeah, okay, have to, to network with professionals within the industry and yeah. to then if once something if something ended to know that there's actually another opportunity to get on another production because obviously it's a city, there's always programs, there's always things being made. Mm-hmm. But in, in, if I'd have stayed in Birmingham it would have been different. So you're what I would describe as a as a media mogul. Okay. Um, <laughs> because not only are you accomplished, you're very humble with it. And you're also inspiring a lot of people. So who, who would you say was, and it can be more than one person, that's inspired your progress, your, your drive to succeed? Mm-hmm. Well, as I mentioned earlier, my mum is definitely my, I guess, biggest inspiration, just knowing kind of everything that she did to make sure that my sister and I had the kind of um, best foot in life. Like I, when I think back as well, my mum used to send us to um, a Pan-African Saturday school on Saturdays. And, um, and my school was a very rubbish school. Like most people left there with no GCSEs. But actually I left there with quite good GC- GCSEs. And I used to know quite a few subjects, but I think one was because luckily, I think I always liked to read and had a passion for education. But two, I think going to that Pan-African Saturday school definitely um, helped because one, I had a sense of self in, in terms of who I am as a black woman mm. growing up in a kind of predominantly white country and also going to predominantly white school. Right. Um, and so, and then also they would, they would say, how are you getting on with your maths? How are you getting on with your English? And, mm. and check, kind of like check our homework and things. So I think little things like that, that kind of like she put in place helped. So I'd definitely say my mum's one of my biggest um, mm. inspirations. Um, I guess looking at kind of like wider industry, um, when I think of like Issa Rae and what she's done and Michaela Cole to kind of like blaze their own trail within the media industry and carve out their own kind of niche and, and just do things in their own way, like create their own content, um, share share their voice in the way that they wanted to share it. It just kind of just really, um, just just really inspired by what they've achieved. And, right. and it just makes me, I guess, want to do the same thing. And I guess thinking back when I had the magazine, um, it did great things, but also it was at a time where we were really having to push and and say to advertisers, you really you really do want to connect with um the black community. Yeah. It's, it, you know, it's we're, we're we have money as well. We're an important demographic, and then not um, us really having to educate them on to, as to why. And you know, many people did support, but then there were lots that were like, no, no, no. Whereas I think now is such a great time if you're black and in business because yeah. actually more people are realizing that um realizing the power of the black pound. Yeah. Um, and the black dollar and and also um just just the influence of black culture um around the diaspora like so if you're not engaging us eventually (laughs) eventually your business isn't going to be a success because we are the global majority so if you're not engaging us as a community then you've got to ask yourself down the line where's your business going to be and it's the same with diversity equity and inclusion if you think as a company um in the kind of 2011 census what 45 percent of kind of like London was made up of kind of like ethnically diverse people from various backgrounds and things. And so the, and so if you're a business in London, um that percentage when the next census comes out is going to be higher. So if you're if you're not engaging that community in terms of hiring them or even trying to get them to buy your products, then eventually um <laughs> they're going to go elsewhere and your business will go under. And it's like if you think of it on a global scale in New York, like Hispanics are the fastest growing population. Mm-hmm. So again, if you're not engaging that community then when you're looking for talent down the line, they're gonna be like, "Well, I'm gonna work for you. You've never won. You've never done anything for my community and right. things." So I think just from um from that aspect of things, yeah. I think um just just seeing the kind of change um you know is a beautiful thing to me, and just seeing the people that have been able to um just increase their increase their their wealth, increase yeah. their power, increase their success in terms of their career because of these changes. I guess just makes me. I guess it makes me happy just seeing others um, succeed. But yeah, Issa Rae, Michaela Cole. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm sure there's lots of other people, yeah, but yeah. I guess they're two people that I would say stand out to me. And of all the kind of many wonderful things that, that you've done, what would you say is the one project which you just enjoyed most and has inspired you most? I'll probably say the Black Magic Awards. And why right. I say that is because if you come to the Black Magic Awards, the... You just you, you you enter that space and you feel like this is this is my community these are my people and um, you feel the sisterhood you feel the brotherhood you leave feeling inspired and and feel, and you leave 
thinking that anything's possible and look at, look at what these people have achieved kind of and said we had the celebrities on there you know we've awarded the likes of your Carlas, your Stormsies etc but then we've awarded people that are doing fantastic things in the, the community and amazing entrepreneurs and it's usually those stories that people are really inspired by because they're like oh wow you know it's like um, there's a ticket website called trips.com and people didn't know it was even a woman that owned that people yeah. were like oh I thought it was a man mm. and so it's just even just things like that that help it help changing the narrative and you know we always invite um young people like youth groups to come in here and kind of start seeing you know like young people in their suits and their dresses and and hearing these stories yeah. and again leaving inspired because i think that you know if you get if you um engage young people from that kind of like teenage age where actually they're thinking about actually what can i do in my life what can i do with my career and they're not limiting themselves because they've seen people that look like them on stage that are doctors lawyers entrepreneurs um, just doing anything then yeah. I think you know that will help you in your life because you, you you don't limit yourself you're like actually I can do anything I want to do yeah. um, and so just you know doing the awards um, seeing how people react to the awards and seeing the different generations because it's an award ceremony because it's so family friendly you'll have grandma down to great grandchild depending on the families coming to the awards and they're all taking something from it yeah. um, so I think I'm just proud of kind of creating a platform um, with our business partner, Kojo and them, to kind of highlight the kind of representation in the black community and show that that we're so diverse, okay. we're so talented, we're so fantastic and amazing, and a space that's unapologetically black, yeah. but also allies can come and hear our stories too. And it's always amazing when you hear how impressed and you know inspired that they are from hearing yeah. the stories as well. Wow. Um, so we're just going to end, uh, just ask some maybe 10 questions. Mm-hmm. Just quick fire, A, A, B kind of answer. Okay. Uh, uh, you iPhone or Android person? Both. iPhone and Android. I have both. <laughs> well, which do you prefer? <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that wasn't the question you said about iPhone or Android person. But if I... Um, oh, iPhone now. It used to be Android, but iPhone now. <laughs> uh, coming to America 1 or coming to America 2? Coming to America 1 all the way. <laughs> Uh, lifetime supply of makeup or lifetime supply of hair products? Lifetime supply of makeup. Okay. Um, R&B or Afrobeats? R&B all the way. Uh, a well-paid job in a toxic environment or super low-paid but it feels like heaven every day? Super low-paid feels like heaven. Can I just say, because you're talking about quick fire, but I have to say that <laughs> nothing I've ever done in my life has ever been because of the money. Like now, I, you know, I'm fantastic, coming a six-figure salary, which yeah. is great. However, I've never um, taken a job because of the money. I've always taken okay. jobs that I've been passionate about. And I think that's made me, one, a happier person. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, and two, has always led to a job with money because it's been, because it's been something that I've, I've loved. And so I just wanted to... <laughs> that's a great answer. <laughs> uh, fish and chips or rice and peas, jet chicken? I'm going to go with fish and chips, okay. just because, actually, so I, can't, I can't do this quick five thing, but actually, <laughs> I'm not a big fan of rice and peas, I'm more of a plain rice person, okay. or a jollof rice person, right. or a vegetable rice person, okay. and with the jerk chicken, so right. that's why I go okay. with fish and chips. <laughs> Call the midwife or Love Island? Call the midwife. Uh, a ram- romantic weekend in Paris, or a few days in the Maldives? A few days in the Maldives, on the beach, hello. <laughs> And last one, heels or trainers? Trainers. I'm a trainer girl. I'm like yeah. a comfort of a star. I can't want to be able to get down, have fun. Yeah. But the heels will come out when they're ready. Cool. <laughs> well, thank you, Anika. It's been wonderful getting to know your story. Yeah. And um, yeah, we'll include your social links in our description. Yeah.